Hello and welcome to Chair Interval Training, brought to you by Community Access Yellow Springs and the Yellow Springs Senior Center. And me, longtime Yellow Springs resident, Lynn Hardman. I'm a Silver Sneakers Flex instructor, and Flex is a program that brings exercise, evidence-based exercise, to you safely in your home. And what a great thing for a year like we've had. And speaking of the year, <clears throat> We're, we're in December now, and that's a big holiday uh, time for many of us. If you're thinking of gift giving, this little gift giving guide was in the Yellow Springs News a couple weeks ago, and it's loaded with uh, local merchants and gift ideas with their hours of operation and their phone numbers, so maybe you could call ahead and um, pay on the phone even, possibly, and just go in and pick up your gifts so you don't have to spend too much time um, mingling. Anyway, wanna, since it is December, and since we're really, this has been a hard year, and we know there's a vaccine or two or three out there, please double down on your safety. Um, double up on your uh, reaching out to friends and relatives, safe ways over the phone, over, FaceTime, you know, please hang in there. We've been training hard and we could do it, okay? So um, before you start this exercise program, please consult your, your doctor or your healthcare provider. If you feel dizzy or out of balance at any time, it's recommended you remain in your sturdy chair. This is chair interval training. So we will be using our chair as well as if you have it, a rubber band and a hand weight today for our strength exercises. We're going to alternate our strength exercises, mostly done in the chair, with some aerobic activities for heart and lungs, mostly on our feet. But remember, you can remain seated and get a lot out of this for the entire hour. So let's get to it. Make sure you got a safe, clear area with nothing to slip, trip, or fall on. And let's move our bodies. Go at your own pace. And remember, if it hurts, don't do it. You can always reduce the range of motion or substitute something else or just take a rest and then join in when you're ready. I've got some classical music today. So we're just gonna warm up gradually. We're gonna use our best posture with our ears over our shoulders, over hips. Whether we're seated or standing, this makes our movement easier. Shoulders kind of in your down, in your down in your back pockets. Breathing. And just see how it feels as you move today. Remember, if anything hurts, just go a little bit more gently or reduce that range of motion. Or go back to the last movement that felt good. We are going to just warm up our shoulders and hips and all the other joints as best we can. Widening out our stance. Always able to see and touch your chair, please. Just push into one foot and then the other. Maybe pull one shoulder up and then the other. rolling those shoulders and if it feels good making that circle back a little bit bigger oh it always feels good to move it brings my mood up if I'm feeling a little down I find getting up and moving around really helps and for me, music also uplifts my spirits. Let's try opening and closing our chest and shoulders. Take a nice deep breath, inhaling through your nose if you can, and exhaling as if you're blowing out a little candle. Ah, good. Let's see how it feels to reach a little bit across the body, pull your navel in. And rotate gently through your spine. 
Good. Just working on limbering up a little so we can move better. We're going to use a couple of patterns and I'd like to sort of preview them to you. We've done them before, but I don't want to assume that you were with us that day. So just take a little march. Bring your body over to the left side of your chair here. Best posture. Always able to see and touch your chair because it's your balance check. We're going to use a pattern to work on balance. I call it two and two. Two lifts and then two steps to the side. So kind of get just ever so slightly behind your chair so you've got a little pathway there. We're going to lift our left knee twice, up, two, and then we're going to take two steps to the right. Then we're going to lift our right knee, and then we're going to take two steps to the left. Two lifts, two steps, two lifts, two steps. If you like, you can always keep your hand just touching that chair. But also, while we're doing this two and two pattern, if you're looking straight ahead, you can see the chair with your peripheral vision without looking down at it. Of course, you can check down if you need to whenever you like, but exercising your peripheral vision is really good. We need to stimulate all parts of the brain and we need to exercise our peripheral vision for things such as driving or just walking around so we don't trip on something. Good. All right, you've got the two and two. Later on, we're going to double up on that, just like we're going to double up on our safety. And we'll try it four times. So let's try four, three, two. Now, four littler steps so we don't travel halfway across the room. And then four on the other side. Get the picture? Four steps. Three. Two, and then four lifts. You got it. Awesome. So that'll be our balance pattern. But we're also going to work on agility because we know if we work on it, we'll get better at it. And research shows that the better our agility, balance, and coordination are, the less our likelihood of falling will be. We got to practice. So sidle up to your chair. Start marching on your left foot, left, left. We're gonna do a rock step forward for four, three, two. So we're stepping slightly forward and together. Then we'll do it to the side, four, three. We've done this before, two, one. Then back a little, four, three, two, one. And then to the side. We can do this at tempo for sure. We've been doing it. But if we wanted to, we could do a double time. Here's what it looks like. Four to the front. Three, two, quick feet and four to the side. Quick feet and four back. Good, just march it out. How did that feel? We're gonna sit and take a little bit of a dynamic stretch. So get yourself to the front of your chair. Situate your feet close to the front legs. This will give you a good measuring stance. Feet wider, use more hips. Feet narrower, use more thighs. Well, we want to strengthen our hips. So keep the hips hinging back and the head up to get the most out of your squats. You can go ahead and sit down or you can squat a few more times with me. Try to keep your weight even throughout the whole entire footprint, both feet. So don't let the heels pop up. And when you're ready, have a seat. So, the, I, we do want our feet to actually physically feel the chair while we're squatting if possible. That way, if you lose your balance, you land in the chair rather than on the ground. All right, and if you're thirsty, and even if you're not, hammer me, help yourself and step to the side, lean to the side and help yourself to a little water. Okay. I like this 
classical music, even though it's kind of been, it's got that disco kind of aerobic mixed sound to it, sort of like elevator music, but it's still fun. Sitting at the edge of your chair, elongate your spine. <sighs> Roll those shoulders up, back, and down, and keep them tucked in your back pockets. And let's put our hands on our thighs, spread our fingers wide, and just tap your toes, lifting them off the ground as far as you can get them. And tap your fingers, keeping the heel of your hand and the heels of your feet pasted to your lap and to the floor. And then take them out and in. Now, if you like, take those hands off your lap and start moving through your shoulders and chest a little. <sighs> that feels good. Warming up the shoulders, the wrists, and the ankles, so important. Okay, bounce your heels off of the ground. Bounce the heels of your hands off of your lap. And if you like, keep those heels bouncing and try conducting a little bit of music. You can have it be small, but articulate through those wrists, or you can make it big. But don't hurt yourself. You can tell that percussion um, section over there to get busy, or the flutes over here. <laughs> All right, got those shoulders and those hips warmed up a little and the ankles a lot. Let's stretch that right leg out. Find a comfy perch, support on that left lap, and inhale up, up, up. Hinge forward, just about halfway towards your lap, and support on your lap as you reach forward. Lifting your toes and your fingers up, and then pushing them down. Good, pull that navel in, embrace with your strong abdominal muscles. As you lean back, drawing your knee closer to your chest and drawing circles with your ankle one way and then the other. Good, okay, inch that left leg out, sit tall. Ah, so think of bringing your nose forward and your tailbone back as you lift your fingers and your toes up. And push the sole down. Good. Sit tall. Pull the navel in. Stretch the back of the hip, drawing the knee closer to your chest. And drawing big flowy circles with your toes. One way and then the other. All right. Time to take a deep breath. Get a little opener for our chest and shoulders. Exhale. Maybe clasp your hands here on the chair and just gently lower your left ear towards your left shoulder and then gently the other side. Reminder, we are going to be moving our bodies for about 10 minutes, 8 to 10, and we're going to shoot for an intensity on a 1 to 10 scale of about 4 to 7 or 8. One on our perceived exertion intensity scale would be, I, I'm ready to go, let's do it. And a 10 would be, I can't do any more. So shoot for that happy medium. You can do it in your chair or standing on your feet. Double check your area, make sure everything is out of the way. Let's start with that balance pattern. Over here on the right, Best posture. Remember, you want to have a safe little alleyway to go behind your chair, able to see and touch it. Seeing it with our peripheral vision or glancing down as we need to, whatever we like. So, two. <laughs> I need to exercise my mouth. All right, let's do two lifts and then two steps to the side. Two lifts over there, and then two steps. Here we go. Right knee, and then step to the left. Left knee, and then step to the right. Just like that. Up, up, over, over. Up, 
up. Now, you can just touch your chair ever so lightly or grab it as needed if you feel wobbly. Another way you can check your balance is to tap your toe down, right? Now, if you want to make it bigger, you can change the intensity by making your range of motion a little bit bigger. Lifting your knee higher, stepping lower. You can also add arm movements. You can push one arm up or both. Arms overhead always will bring your heart rate up a little bit. So, you don't want to do it too much. You can bring it back down and just maybe go at your own pace. Sometimes working harder and then bringing it back into a lower level, that's another form of interval training. Changing the intensity. Now, we've been working on balance while we're doing these lifts because we're only on one leg. But we can progress and make it a little harder by making it four lifts. Let's try four, three, two. Now four little steps. Four, three, two, four lifts. Up, 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 and over. You can go down low and use those strong legs. Or if you like, you don't have to go down. But I'm, you know what? These muscles on the fronts of my thighs are starting to feel these knee lifts. So let's do one more over here for knees. And let's just march it out. Do a little intensity check. How are you doing on our one to 10 scale? Are you at a three, four yet? I hope we're getting there. You can control this by how much energy you put into it. But remember, sometimes less is more if you want to do it for the long haul, okay? So pace yourself. Make sure you're within reach of your chair. We're gonna do this a little bit differently. We're gonna just try a little hamstring curl. So it helps you widen your stance. And then our lift will be two hamstring curls or butt kickers. Hmm, let's see. One, two, and then over. Two, one, two, over, two, up, two, over, two. You could row with those hamstring curls. You could just use one hand near your chair. If you don't need a, a balance check, you can use both arms. Row, row, opening that chest. On the hamstring curls, please try to keep your knee down. And this and your foot dorsiflex. This will use a little more of your hamstrings, the back muscles on your thigh, and your hips. Good. Working on balance. We can always touch our chair or tap our toe down if we need. How are you doing with this? I hope you're following along as best you can. We're doing two and two. Let's try, when we get over to the other side, four hamstring curls. Four, three, two. Now four little itty bitty steps. Three, two, and then four on the right side. Got it? Four, three, two, one. If you wanted to add more aerobic intensity, you could add arms overhead. Yeah, that would do it. And remember, you could dip down low with your steps and then get up high on your hamstring curls. Conversely, if you want to make it easier, a little less intense, but still relevant to your balance, make it smaller. Just do your best to keep moving. Four, three, two. Good, let's do one more on each side with the hamstring curls. And then we're gonna try mixing it up a little bit. Let's march it out first. How are you doing? Can you talk? That's another great way to test if you're at the appropriate intensity. You should be able to talk. You can always take a little seat.
seat and rest for a couple, and then pop back at it. You can also do it in your chair, but this next move is hard to do in your chair, but it's really good for your calf and ankle strength and your balance. We're gonna do two toe raises, that's our lift lift, and then we're gonna step over and do two toe raises. Make sure you can touch your chair, get up on the balls of your feet twice, and then over and up, up, up. You can really make this big if you like, but do your best and go at your desired intensity pace. Up, up, and over, over, up, up, and let's try it four times. Four, three, two, and over, four, three, how low do you want to go? <laughs> up, how high do you want to go? And over, and on your toes again, four, three, two, over, four, three, two, Last time on this side, let's do one more over here. Good, up four, three, two, march it out. How did that feel? I hope it, it felt good. We're gonna do it another way. That's what's tickling me today. All right, <laughs> we're gonna try it two and two again, but this time we're gonna keep that longer leg and work on the side of our hip, hip abduction. Make sure you can touch your chair. Keep your support leg sort of soft and lift for two. Out, two, over, lift. Pull your navel in to support your spine and strengthen your balance. Keep that foot dorsiflex and really feel the hips power up. Good, two and two. If you wanted to and you don't need a balance check, you could use both arms. Two over here and two over here. Let's try fours. Four, three, two, you got it. And little steps, three, two, and lift. Four, three, two, and little steps, four, Three, you can go low if you like. Up, three, two, and over, four, three, two. One more on each side, how about? And over, and up. Last set, three, two, one. Good job, march it out, how are you doing? All right? On our scale of one to 10 for perceived exertion, that means how do you feel? How are you now? If you're at a seven, that's excellent. If you are at a four, that is also excellent. If you're at a one, maybe next time we need to work a little harder. But it's time to shift gears, I think. Yes, it is almost time to shift gears. We're gonna be working on strength, and our number one strength exercise is squatting. I harp on that a lot, but research shows the longer we can walk and the longer we can squat, the greater our risk, or not risk, the greater our likelihood of living independently gets. And who doesn't want that, right? So, I say do your best. Line those feet up with the chair. Keep the heels digging in. Keep all 10 toes grabbing the floorboards. Keep your chin up. Get your hips back. As you sit down, keeping your head and chest up helps correct your posture. Try to, let, don't let the knees drift in. And swinging your arms forward kind of does a counterbalance because sometimes it feels like we're gonna roll over backwards, right? And that's why when your feet are touching the chair, you're in good position should you whoop, lose your balance. All right, there'll be an opportunity to do squats again later. And remember, it's always a choice. You have choices. Don't have to do 
any of the exercises that I suggest. But I do strongly urge you to get a drink of water. We're going to use our band to do a little bit of strength work. Let me see what I have on my menu today. We're going to do some more hip abduction, some strengthening of our abdominals, our ankle strengthening, our biceps, our triceps. You know, our shoulders, we're going to try and get everything. We're going to try. Sure. So sit up, set yourself up for success by sitting close to the edge of your chair. Holding the two handles, or if you've got a flat latex band, you're just going to grab it like that, right? Put your feet on top so that you have an equal-ish length of tubing on either side. And if you want to put more, well actually, for this exercise, bring the handles into the middle and crisscross them so that you got a letter X. Just hold those handles close to your abdomen and tighten your abdominals so that if someone were to punch you, you're still breathing, but you're braced. Tuck your tailbone under and lean back. Woo! How far you lean back is up to you, but I'm trying to tap my shoulder blades against the back of the seat with my hips all the way forward, strengthening the core or the abdominals, keeping them pulled in the whole time. Good. At least I hope it's good. All right. Let's add as we sit up let's add a little step out to the right as we sit back and then out to the left keep your body centered on your seat that is your spine tuck your tailbone under so you got an option to, to do these abdominal slides or you could if your abdominals or your lower back are feeling fatigued you could stay in the upright position and work on the hip abduction. Good. Do as many as you like. I'm going to try four more on each side. That's one on the right, one on the left. Two, you can count with me. Two, three. Pulling that navel in the whole time if you're doing those abdominal slides. And four. Finish off with the left. Excellent. Now sitting up tall, bring those handles to the outside of your thighs and maybe put a little space between your feet because our ankles are super strong. We are going to lift our toes up off of the floor but keep the heels pasted and then take them out and tap them in and tap them. So keep the toes up off of the floor. You could do this fast if you like, strengthening the ankle joint. Also, if you're keeping those toes lifted up off of the floor, you're strengthening your shins, the fronts of your lower legs, so that you don't get a little bit of foot drop and trip over your own feet. Who hasn't done that before? Okay, give those ankles a break. Not literally, <laughs> give them a rest. And that's what we're trying to avoid, is an ankle break. And bring those uh, handles into the middle, if you like. Sit tall, paste your elbows right on the ribs, palms up, and we're gonna try a little bicep curl. Straight up, straight down, but not all the way down. Working in a range where you feel a good tension on the front, the biceps fronts of the upper arm. Now, if you want, drag your heel back, keeping it close to the floor, and strengthen the hamstrings. So you're essentially sliding that heel back. Breathing, strengthening the flexors of the arm and the flexors of the leg. So the 
muscles on our arms we're working are the biceps femoris. I'm sorry, the biceps. And the muscles on our legs, some of them that we're working, are the biceps femoris. So they're both biceps. Oh, that was a lot. Shall we try one more exercise? Uncross your tubing. Grab it so that your palms are facing behind you. Arms are straight, shoulders are rolled down in those back pockets, chest is lifted. And lean ever so slightly forward, keeping the torso long and strong. And push, push those hands straight back, elbows straight, strengthening the rear shoulders and the triceps. So it's a small range of motion here, and if it hurts, reduce the range of motion or go back to one of the other exercises we just did. Do your best, and maybe four more. Good, you should feel like, oh, well, I'm done with that. Now, one more set of work, but scooch back into your chair. And this is an option, bringing your tubing handles to the middle of your legs. This one is an option to squat. That's why I wanted you to scooch back in your chair. Keep your head and chest up. Put your weight into your heels and even if you don't stand up, pretend like you're going to. Just like that. And that will strengthen your hips and your um, thighs. Keep your core braced and keep breathing. And if you can, get up all the way. You can sit back down or you can just tap. And if you want, you can add that upright row. That's a big exercise. So you can be doing the rows seated, elbows up, wrists straight. You can be doing the squats without the rows. Or you can do both. You know what else you can also do? Rest. <laughs> Remove the tension from your band before you step off. And we're done with that for now, so you can hang it up or stow it away and get another little sip of water. Oh, I got a little thirsty there with that work. It's a good idea to sip water throughout your exercise particularly at least every 20 minutes, shoot for sipping about six ounces or so. Um, it's, it's, a, it's a something to shoot for anyway, uh, but throughout the period of our exercise, ideally you will have sipped eight ounces at least, and maybe eight ounces prior and eight ounces after our exercise, and that will help you to stay hydrated. It's time to move again. We're gonna do that agility pattern, which was a rock step, forward, together, forward, together. Does it work seated? Well, yes it does. But if you wanna be on your feet, you're encouraged to take your time right now and get on your feet to the right side of your chair. We're stepping back, rocking back, rocking back. We're doing sets of four. I'm just demonstrating it in the seat. For those of you who want to, need to be there today, try two to the front, two, two, and two to the side, two, good, and two to the back. You can reach over and touch your chair at any time, and two to the side, and we can do one each way, side, back, side, we can do it faster if we want, forward, side, Back, side, forward, side, keep going. Forward, side, quick feet. Forward, side, let's try it in twos. Two to the front, two to the side, two to the back, two to the side. How about fours? Four, three, two, and side. Four, three, two, back. Four, three, hold on to your horses. Side. Woo, that was quite the ride. March it out. 
I'm going to transition to my feet. You can transition to your seat. You know how you're doing, but tell me out loud, please, how you're doing on a scale of 1 to 10. 1 is nothing. 10 is too much. Are you a happy medium? I hope so. Let's bring our self over to the left side and march on that left foot and do it all over again. So we went on our rock steps from four to two to one at tempo. And then we speeded it up double time and we went from ones to twos to fours. So, ready, ready, steady, rock step forward. Four, got your chair where you can see it and touch it. Two more to the front, side, four, three, you can really get down with it, two, one, back, pumping those arms if you like, adds to the intensity, side, four, three, you can do overhead if you want, two, one, two to the front now, two, Wait, did I do that wrong? Two. No, we're, we're fine. We're doing well. Ah! To the back. Side. One each way. Here we go. Forward. Side. Back. Side. Double time. Forward. Side. Back. Little quick feet. Forward. Side. Back. One more time. One. One, one. How about doubles? Two to the front. Two to the side. Two back. Two side. Two. Two. How you doing? You can go at your own pace. How about four each way? Three, two, side. Four, three, two. You can do it. Four to the back. And the side, four, three, two, phew, slow your roll. How are you doing? Can you talk? Hopefully you can talk, but you can't sing operatically. <laughs> you should be able to utter a few words, make some sense. Let's take it over to the right again and do it a little bit differently. This time, let's build up to eight. We can do it. We'll start at one, and then we'll get to eight. And then when we get to eight, we're gonna go right into our double times. So how about it? March on your right. Right? Okay, ready? Ready, steady, rock step one to the front. One, now, one to the side, back, side. Let's do it again. Rock forward, rock side. Picking up our feet, keeping our best posture. Ready, twos, two to the front. Side, two. Back, two. Oops. Side. Well, let's try fours here. Four, three, two, one. Now side, four. Three. Once we've gone fast, this feels kind of slow. Four to the back. Three, two, one. Are you ready for eights? Four to the side. Three, two. I hope I put my new song in there. Oh, I did. Let's find this new beat. This is kind of quick, so bear with me. We're going to do eight at tempo forward side back and then we're going to try our double time eight to the front seven count with me six five four pump those arms three two one side eight seven six light on your feet five four three Two, one, rock back. Eight, seven, six, five, four, three, two, one, 
one, rock side, eight. And after this set, seven, we're gonna go double time, forward. Four more at tempo, four, three, two, get ready, get set, go. Eight quick steps, eight, seven, six, pump those arms, four, three, two, side, eight, seven, quick feet, you got it, four, three, two, back, you got your chair, we're almost there, four more, three, two, last to the side, eight, step it, step it, quick feet, four is like hot lava, <laughs> Woo! how do you do, how do you do, if you had to give how you do a number, are you in our four to eight, if you're in an eight, that means you think you should slow down a little, you can. If you're doing well and you're at a four, let's try it on the left side. So again, we're gonna just start off with eight rock steps at tempo each direction. When we get back to the front, we're gonna go double time. Let's get our best posture, able to see and touch the chair. Marching on your left, let's rock step forward. Good, six more. Five more to the front. Four, three, two. Now rock side. Eight, seven. Really pick those feet up each time off of the floor. Four more to the side. Three, two, and eight to the back. Seven, six, five. Four, three, two, eight more at tempo side. Good, six more, five. After these four, we're gonna go double time to the front. Two more, are you ready? Go, eight, seven, six, five. Run your best. <laughs> side, eight. Seven, six, five, four, pump those arms, breathe, back, eight, seven, six, five, four, three, two, last set of eight, quick feet, quick feet, good, four more, three, two, woo, oh, march it out, take a deep breath, wow, that got my heart rate up, this music, this particular song, was just a little quicker than I normally use. But I just felt that we needed an aerobically tortured version of Swan Lake to, to make sure we got our agility working. <laughs> All right, catch your breath. We're gonna transition to another set of strength work. Starting off with, yes, you betcha, your favorite exercise, or maybe not your favorite. But do your best to get back in your chair safely, slowly, and that will be good strength work in and of itself. So feet close to the chair, head and chest staying up. Keeping your eyes focused on a point off in the distance will help your posture. Hinging your hips back, keeping your weight even in both right and left feet, and in all parts of your feet. So all of your toes and both of your heels really grabbing the floor. You can do eight to 10 squats, or you can just sit down slowly once. Ah, I'm really thirsty now. It's been cold weather, as expected in the winter. And with the um, furnace going, it doesn't always make me as thirsty. Sometimes I mistake thirst for hunger. So staying hydrated helps your brain and your body function better. And just on cue, we are ready for that second set of strength work. We're going to use any kind of hand weights you have um, available to you in your home. But almost everybody in Yellow Springs has got a, a gallon jug that you bought milk in and used it all up and then rinsed it out and cleaned it very well. And then you can put, if you have a gallon jug, it will weigh almost exactly eight pounds, plus or minus a little, if you fill it 
full to the top. This just happened to be a gallon and a quarter or 160 ounces. So it would weigh more like 10 pounds full. And I have it almost full. And that is a good weight for me to use, almost like a kettlebell. Anyway, you can use hand weights. You could do this with no weight. You could do this. You know what? Exercise is the best on earth, even in space. The one you do. <laughs> so let's do it. We are going to sit back in our chair and do a little bit of a upright row. If you widen your stance, touch your heels to your chair because you'll have the option to squat. And just hinge forward at the hips a little. Keep the tailbone back, brace with your abs, and lift that weight up closer to your heart and then down. Keep your abdominals bracing. Exhale as you lift. Inhale as you lower. If you like, you can do a stand up, tap your hips, or just lower into your squat. With your heels touching the chair, you know you could sit back down whenever you like. So these are upright rows. With our squats, you can certainly be doing them in the chair to strengthen your upper back and rear shoulders and biceps. And if your shoulders aren't ready for that today, you can be doing the squat. And that was a lot, actually, if you were using a good amount of weight. If you had hand weights smaller, like one to three pounds in each hand, you're going to hold both, right? unless one arm is sore. There's no law or rule that says you have to do exactly the same thing on both sides. Listen to your body and don't do it if it hurts. All right, now we're gonna scooch forward so we can concentrate a little bit more on our core. We did a pulling exercise. Then we'll have the option of adding a push or a cross chop. But let's start by focusing on the core, the abdominals. Pull the navel in, rest your weight on your lap. Scoot your hips to the edge of your chair. Tuck your tailbone under and lean back, feeling that brace as if you're zipping up tight pants. And then just hold your jaw close to your heart. Lean back, lean forward. Ooh, if you need to cradle, one hand left under the jug, right on the handle. That's fine. That's what I'm going to do. It feels better to me as I strengthen the abdominals. Keep your chin tucked and the back of the neck sort of long. If your lower back begins to hurt, you can stay leaning into your chair back. We're going to add a cross chop. So bringing it closer to our right shoulder and pushing it up to an imaginary shelf. Test the range of motion that feels comfortable but challenging to you. Of course, pushing all the way up into a straight arm across the body would be the furthest you can use your range of motion. Rotate, look at your right shoulder. Look up at the where the ceiling meets the wall to the left of your body. We're going to do a few more of these. Rotate, keep that navel pulling in, keep that abdominal brace. We're working the shoulder, front of the shoulder, and the tricep and the chest on the right side, and a little bit helping on the left. Oh, wow, that was a lot. Of course, you could have just done the upper body part, or you could have just done the lower body part with the rotation. Lots of choices. We're going to do the other side, the left side, but first let's give our abdominals a break and come back in our chair, scooching back, getting those heels to touch the chair should you choose to do the squats. And this time when we do our upright rows, we're going to add the option of coming to our tippy toes. So be careful. Let's start by hinging forward at the hips. Lowering the weight, keeping the head and the chest up, digging our heels in, and upright row. We don't ever need to have that weight go any higher than our collarbone. 
It's hard on the shoulder joint. At the top, think of squeezing your shoulder blades together. Now, this is a big exercise, but if you want more, dig your heels in as if you're going to stand up, but you don't have to. Those of you who want to, stand up and get up on the balls of your feet. Down, maybe tap up. Tippy toes, working on balance and calf strength. Maybe four more if you like. Three, you can stop when you need to. Two, and one. Oh, I felt that in my calves. We'll have an opportunity to stretch them, but let's do that other side chop. Sitting forward in our seat, focusing first on the abdominals, resting the weight on our lap, tuck your tailbone under, brace, lean back. See how that abdominal slide feels. You can cradle that, uh, wait a minute, you can hold the jug with your left and cradle with your right and see how those cross chops feel. Exhale, ideally, as you push. Kind of look back at your left shoulder and up to where the ceiling and the wall meet over to the right side of your body. Whoa, this is a big exercise. I don't know why, as many times as I've done exercise sessions, I'm always a bit surprised at how um, I can get a little breathy while doing this anaerobic exercise. Anaerobic strength work is different than aerobic cardiovascular work. Do your best and then take a rest. Maybe after two more, pull that navel in. And one more. Woo. Yeah, so the goal of doing when we're the goal of perceived exertion when you're doing strength training is a little different than when we're doing the cardiovascular intervals. You should feel like you have used up all of the energy in the best form you can by the end of a set of exercises. If you didn't get to that because of a uh, orthopedic or a joint challenge, that's okay. Know that erring on the conservative and being able to do it over and over and over again is the best thing. Working too hard and then not being able to do the exercise, that won't get us to where we want to get. So bear in mind, sometimes a little on the light side bearing on the safety is better than trying to push too hard, particularly at a certain age. <laughs> here's to our health and here's to aging with grace in place. Mm. So we're going to do one more balance exercise. I'll tell you where we're going. It's our tightrope walk. Um, it's slow, however, and we're going to use our chair as our, as our balance check. If you don't like doing this one in the air, just visualize yourself doing it in your chair. It's going to be our toe heel walk with our hip swings. So visualization imagery is a very powerful tool to enhance your exercise program. But this particular balance exercise, you're going to need your chair and you're going to need to set yourself up for safety by being about an arm's length away. I'm just going to get this out of the way. Best posture. And all we're going to do is look straight ahead and pretend like we're on a balance beam or a tightrope and keep that hand as close as you can to the chair, that right hand now. As you step slowly, toe up, heel the toe or thereabouts, forward, just about three steps. Once you get there, you can't, if you go any further, you're not going to be able to touch your chair. I want you to work on your hip swings, keeping the 
navel in, head high, legs straight at the knee, and then going backward. That's a little trickier, so keep your hand right there, fingernails, breath away from the chair. Let's try our hip swings on the other leg. I'm better on one leg than the other. How about you? Let's do it one more time forward. Take your time. If you're able to touch your chair and you wanted to freeze and you felt safe and you're able to touch your chair, you can try closing your eyes for a moment. Knowing you can grab your chair and open your eyes or put your foot down. And one more time backward, toe, heel, toe, heel. And let's try the other leg, making sure that you're set up for success. You didn't get too far away from your chair. I had to adjust there. And if you feel confident and you can touch your chair, you can close your eyes for a second. Knowing you can grab your chair, open your eyes and put your foot down. That was tricky for me. I hope it was a little tricky for you. Let's get a calf stretch while we're standing because that's the easiest way to do it. Another nice way to do it is with a door or a sturdy wall where you step one leg back incrementally to where you could paste the heel on the ground and keep it there and lean forward. If you had your imaginary wall, <laughs> you would be pushing into it. Because calf muscles are small, but really strong, and sometimes get overly tight. Let's try the other leg. And then we're going to finish off our stretches in the chair. So pasting the heel to the ground, keeping the knee straight, but not locked. And leaning forward and giving it some time. The calf muscles and the Achilles tendon and the bottom of the foot, all loosening and lengthening. And we're gonna sit down and get another little stretch. You don't have to squat a lot, but be mindful. And just do one super slow sit down and maybe freeze in your beautiful chair pose before you repose. Another great exercise session, yay for you. You can do these anytime you want to. If you have access to the internet, you can go to YouTube and search for Community Access Yellow Springs and you could go back and pick your own time and your own exercise session. We've been doing them since April <laughs> and it's December, holy cow. All right, good time to get a sip of water if you like. And just slow your breathing mindfully, inhaling through your nose like you're smelling your favorite holiday dish, baking. You can bake for yourself and then freeze. That makes sense. Or you can just make a meal for your little bubble that you've been spending lots of time during the pandemic. But when I say bubble, it's those folks that you are living with, that you're seeing on a very regular basis and keeping that number as low as possible reduces the spread, helps keep ourselves safe and others because it's a, this, this, this month is going to be a stretch and the people getting stretched, the furthest are the healthcare workers and we want to make sure there's space for anybody who needs to go to a hospital for non-COVID emergencies because those will continue to happen. So let's stretch our own muscles. Turning sideways in your chair is a great way to get the front of this thigh and hip flexor lengthened. So if you hinge forward, it helps to get that leg back slowly without getting a cramp. Relax this whole left leg so it, the knee just drifts down to the ground. Breathe and lift the crown of your head up. Arm two if you like. 
opening your spine a bit, if it feels good to you. And then when you're ready, exhale and stretch through the side of your torso. Ooh, that feels good today. Deep belly breath. Expanding the ribs and the chest. Ah, release. We're gonna shift to the other side, but let's get a chest opener in between. Inhale, if you can, through your nose as you open your hands, forearms, biceps, shoulders, chest. And lift your heart. And exhale when you're ready. As you close the spine and push out all the stale air. Inhale as the hands go up, just as far as is comfortable for you. And you have to be careful, but lifting your chest and your chin a wee bit is okay. We don't want to tip our head back too far. And we'll turn, face the other direction. I like to hold on to my chair. <laughs> I've been known to fall out of my chair. <laughs> it's difficult, but sometimes when I'm testing out new exercises, the results aren't always as desired. <laughs> So getting that right leg back, allowing the right knee to drift down, lengthening the front of the hip, inhale, stretching up and even opening the hip a little bit more and or the spine. And when you're ready, exhale and stretch through the side. Relax. We can get better at anything we practice. And I know it's been hard, but we've been practicing this, the, all of these safety things, so we can do it. We can do it. It's helpful to know that everybody is trying. And it's also helpful to reach out to your friends and, I mean, like, be aggressive. Practice aggressive friendship. <laughs> I made a goal for myself, and so far I'm sticking with it, plus or minus a couple of days minus, mostly plus, to call three folks every day um, and, and to reach out and see how they're doing, friends and loved ones, co-workers, because I'm not at work anymore. I'm working exclusively for my home. I just felt like this was the time to do it. Um, yeah, so do what you need to do to stay safe. Double down on your your defense and just be safe. Again, if you can, shop locally, okay? This was in the Yell Springs News. I bet you could probably pick it up at the Yell Springs News office or at Tom's Market, but uh, you could organize the gifts that you wanna get and support our local merchants. They need you. This shirt was uh, produced by a local merchant, um, Anthony Wall Sage. Gosh, I hope I got your name right. Um, anyway, he, he's in um, King's Yard, and he does a beautiful business. This is my volleyball women's 60-plus team. Um, we're looking forward to going to Florida in November 2021, and I think it's going to happen because we were able to train this summer safely with our masks on outdoors, Washing our hands with uh, sanitizer in between matches because we were outdoors playing on sand. It was a great time. And I'm looking forward to great times in the future, but not just yet. Be safe. Wear your mask. Keep washing your hands. Keep in your bubble. And support Yellow Springs merchants. Keep it safe and simple. Bye for now.